Hey guys, it's Zal. Today I'm going to write a new strategy using the Ichimoku Cloud Indicator. Next, I'm gonna use this new indicator that I found in my previous video to improve the results of this strategy drastically. So let's get right into it. Let's open the Ichimoku Cloud on Trading View. And this is how it looks like on the 4 hours time frame. Now the lines that we care about are these two, the blue and red one, and this cloud. I find this green line here really useless, so I'm gonna disable this. It's called the lagging span, which is basically the price with a bit of lag. So let's remove that. To take a long position in this strategy, we need this blue line, which is called the conversion line, to go above the red line, which is called the baseline. This will show us the short term trend of the market. And then we also need the cloud to be green. In other words, we need the green line to be above the red line. Now these two are called span A and span B. Now you don't have to know about the names, but we're going to use it in a second. All right, so let's go to Jesse and create a new strategy and name it Ichimoku Cloud. Let's copy this name and open it in my PyCharm ID, which is way smarter. All right, so first, let's define a new property, and I'm going to call it the small trend. In it, I'm going to say C equals TA Ichimoku Cloud, and I'm going to pass the current candles, and I won't even change the default parameters, and I'm going to say if C dot conversion line, which again is this blue line, is above this red line, which is called the baseline. So if this one is above the baseline, return 1 for an uptrend, otherwise return minus 1 for a downtrend. Now, our entry rule is going to be if the small trend equals 1, and for short entries, we will do the opposite. We'll say if the small trend equals minus 1. All right, so let's say this condition is true and we are about to open a long position. What should be our position sizing and entry price? I realized that oftentimes when the entry rule for this strategy is true, for example, in here, the cloud is green and at this point, the conversion line, again, the blue line, is above the baseline, which is this red one. The price always goes down a bit. Not always, but most times. So because of that, I decided not to open the position using a market order, as I usually do. Instead, I want to use a limit order. So I don't want to buy here. I want to buy a little bit below this price. Now, how do we decide where exactly to buy? Now, we could use some kind of line, such as the conversion line in this case would be a good choice. But I wanted to make it dynamic. And, and usually, my go-to indicator for setting a price dynamically, which would work with any trading symbol, is the ATR. I often use it for a stop loss, but in this case, I also want to use it for entry. So I want to say one ATR below this value. So the entry is going to be the current price minus TA ATR, and then I'm going to pass the current candles, and that's it. So my sub is going to be, as always, the entry price minus the ATR multiplied by some kind of multiplier, and I'm going to use 2.5 for this one. As for the quantity of this position, I'm going to use the risk to quantity utility function of Jesse, which would allow us to limit the risk of this position to a certain number. And I usually use three. So that means if this trade goes against us, we won't lose more than 3% of our capital. You could go with five if your risk appetite allows you, but I'm going to stick with three. So the quantity equals utils risk to quantity. The first value is the capital, and I'm going to pass the available margin. The next one is the risk. I'm going to pass three. Next, we have the entry. I'm going to pass the entry, then the stop. And I will also set the fee rate to the current fee of the exchange that I'm trading. All right, now we can pass the buy order, which is going to be the quantity, and then the entry price. And as for the short position, I'm going to do the opposite. So that means the entry is going to be the current price plus one ATR. The stop is going to be the entry plus two times of the ATR and the quantity is similar and instead of a buy order, we use a sell order. Now the value of the should cancel entry, usually we don't really care about it if we are entering with a market order. But if you are using a limit order or a sub order to enter the position, like we are in this case, which we are using a limit order to enter at a lower price, it has to be true. All right, so now it's time to submit the sub plus order. For that, I'm gonna say when a new position is opened, on open position, I'm going to say if it's a long position using the is long property, my sub loss is going to be the current positions quantity and the price of it is going to be 
the entry price of my position, which is this, minus the current ATR multiplied by 2.5, which is exactly the value that we entered here. But because this value was defined inside the go short method, we don't have access to it here. Sure, we could define this inside some kind of variable that we could also use here, but because it was really easy to reuse, I'm just redoing the calculation. Next, I'm gonna say L if it is a short position, I will do the same except instead of subtracting the ATR from the entry price of my position, I will add to it. All right, so now we are entering trades, we are also exiting using the surplus, but we're not taking profits. So for taking the profit, instead of using a take profit order, I wanted to ride the trend for as long as possible. So I'm gonna say if my entry condition is no longer valid, in other words, if the conversion line goes below the baseline, like it happened here, or in here, I want to close the position. So this will let us that if there is really a strong trend in the market, we can ride it for as long as possible. So I'm going to say update position. If it's a long position, I will say if the small trend is minus one, which is the opposite of our entry, then I'm going to use this shortcut in Jesse, which is used for liquidating everything, which is simply self.liquidate. And next, I want to do the opposite for a short position. So now we have our entry rules. We're doing the position sizing. We're submitting the stop loss and we define our take profit condition. So now we're ready to do a backtest. So let's go back to Jesse, go to the backtesting section. The Binance Perpetual Futures is fine. Let's choose the Ichimoku Cloud strategy. The duration of since 2022 up until 2024 is fine for me because during that time we had one bear market and one kind of bull market. So I find it a good period for this strategy. The fast mode is on. The benchmark is also on. All right, so I'm going to start with the 15 minutes time frame. Let's start it. And I want to also do another one with the 30 minutes and another one with the one hour and another one with the four hours. And I notice when I create a new tab using this button, it will duplicate everything from the previous tab. That's why I'm just changing the time frame. All right, so this is the results for the 15 minutes. This is for 30 minutes, the one hour and the four hours. So, so far the one hour looks the best. Now, what's the PL? We have 8% profit with the max return of minus 38%. So pretty horrible, but that's fine because so far we just defined one entry condition, which is never profitable because we always need at least a couple of entry conditions for the strategy to be profitable. So let's go back and define a new property and I'm gonna call it the big trend. And in it, I'm gonna first say C equals the HMQ cloud. But this time, instead of using the conversion line and the baseline, I'm gonna use the span A and a span B, which if you forgot, it's this cloud. So this one is the span A and this one is the span B. So if I wanna say that when the cloud is green, take a long position, I'm gonna say if the span A is bigger than the span B, then we are in uptrend. All right, so if C that span A is bigger than span B, return one, otherwise, return minus one. And I'm gonna go here and add this condition. So let's go back to Jesse. Now, instead of going back and forth between four tabs to rerun this back test, I wanna use this new feature of Jesse, which I just implemented, and it may not even be out by the time you're watching this video, which is this new page called Benchmark. Now you can see the metrics of all the other tabs that I had open, but because it's on one page, it's much easier to just compare the values altogether. Not only that, now that I wanna rerun the back tests, instead of doing them individually, I can just press this one button, which will rerun all of them. Now here we can see the net profit for all of them and it seems like the one hour is still the best. The max return of the one hour is still the lowest. And if you wanna go to the tab to look at the equity chart, we can do that here. All right, so it looks like this indicator does have some potential, but as it is expected with trend following strategies, it is getting slaughtered when it reaches a ranging market. And to avoid the ranging market, I'm gonna use the ADX indicator, which I always use for this purpose. So let's go back and define a new property. Let's call it the ADX. And in it, I'm gonna say whether or not the ADX of the current candles is bigger than 50. And now we should also add it to our entry rules. So let's go back to Jesse and rerun the back tests. So while this is going, I wanted to quickly remind you guys that we have a Discord community with more than 3000 quants such as you and I. We hang out there, share ideas and help each other out. And I would love to see you guys there. All right, look at that. The PNL, which used to be negative for most of them, is now positive for four hours, 
for one hour and 30 minutes, but it's still negative for 15 minutes time frame. The piano looks the best still on the one hour, but if we consider the max to it, it actually looks best on the 30 minutes. All right, so let's look at the equity curve. And here it is on the hourly, here it is on the 30 minutes, 15 minutes, and on the four hours. Now I think we're gonna go with either the one hour or 30 minutes. Now this result is already good enough for me, but I wanna use this new indicator that I found in my previous video, and I found it really helpful with this type of a strategy. It's called the choppiness index, so let's define a new property and call it chop. And I'm gonna say whether or not the chop is below 50 for this current value. Now, it works a bit similar to the ADX, but you have to remember that its values are kind of against the ADX. So what I mean by that is in ADX, we want the value to be above 50, which would show us that there is enough volatility in the market. But with the choppiness index indicator, we wanna make sure that there is less choppiness, in other words, randomness in the market, which is useful to us because our job is to look for the patterns in the market, right? We don't want randomness. All right, so let's also add this condition. and rerun everything one more time. All right, look at this. The PL actually increased for both the 30 minutes and the one hour, but that's not really important. The most important part is the max serotonin actually came down to minus 6.3 and minus 7.7, .7, which is really amazing. The sharp ratio is 1.2 for both of them. The Calma ratio, which is actually my favorite metric because it considers the max serotonin, is 2.9 for this one. So it's significantly better than this one. Now let's look at the equity curve, and it looks amazing, but because the max serotonin is really low in this case, it's minus seven, and my risk tolerance is usually up until minus 30%, that means I can easily add to the size of this position. So that means I can even add the size of my positions up to four in here. So I will simply add my available margin by four, go back and rerun everything one more time, and now the profit on the one hour is 257 and on the 30 minutes it is 166%. The max throttle is minus 23% for the 30 minutes and on the one hour it is minus 27%. And notice that these ratios don't really change because it's still considering the PNL comparing to the max throttle. So that's why these two are still the same number. All right, so let's look at the equity curve. And now it looks like this. So during these two years, which we didn't really have a great market, we could have made up to 257%. With this one, the profit was a bit lower, but the max drawdown is still lower. So that means I can even increase my position size in this one to get maybe even better results. But as for the equity curve, to be honest, I'm not sure which one looks better because with this one, we ended up with more profits but with this one, it seems a bit more stable to me. So I'm not really sure which one to use. I'm going to leave that decision to you. But what I'm sure is that the result of the 15 minutes time frame is not good. And neither it is with the four hours time frame. It's, it's taking just too few trades and I'm not happy with that. I'm going to submit the source code of this strategy alongside with this backtest result for different periods and other symbols such as Ethereum on our strategy directory on our website. And as always, we're going to have a giveaway. A random person who likes this video, posts a comment and subscribes to the channel is going to win 1 million buck token. Alright, let's pick the winner for the previous video. And the winner is... Just found your channel and subscribe, pretty interesting stuff. Thank you so much for your comment, please reach out to me so that I can send you your bank tokens. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.